What's up, the squad? Back with another video. I seen the title's going down. Make sure y'all hit the like button, subscribe button for me, please. Y'all see it in the title. I told y'all, not too much talking tonight. I got a pinch nerve in my back, and uh, I'm a little uncomfortable. Let's get into the video. Potential debate tomorrow evening, and there are reports out today that Tim Waltz is reportedly nervous about <laughs> facing off against J.D. Vance. He apparently warned Vice President Harris that he's... Man, listen. I'm, I'm telling y'all right now, they have made it seem... They everywhere. Oh, I'm ready for him. He he said something about J.D. Vance getting off the couch. Now he nervous? And say... J.D. Vance. He apparently warned Vice President Harris that he's a bad debater and he's worried about letting her down, according to reporting by CNN. Now you can see the vice presidential debate hosted by CBS News. Oh, this is about to be fun. I'm going on live. He told Harris he was, he was, uh, he warned her that he was a bad debater? Oh, yeah. It's so with. Debate hosted by CBS News here on Fox. We will have live coverage of it with our whole team tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. So we oh, have former wait. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy here. We will speak to him in just a moment. But first, we begin with Ian Sams. I'm, I'm making the thumbnail and everything. I can't wait. 2024 Senior Advisor Ian, great to have you with us. Thank you very much for joining us today. So your reaction to this that that he's nervous i'm sorry for pausing y'all every this this right here y'all know y'all know how uh what me and ian sounds uh relationship is how, how i think of ian sounds pause sounded weird I'm telling y'all he literally reminds me he he gives those pinocchio vibes bro Action to this that that he's nervous watch is him. this a classic watch he, watch. lowering of expectations or is is he actually concerned having not had that much experience at this well thanks for having me martha and i appreciate you uh, giving us the opportunity to talk about Absolutely. this important debate tomorrow night i think uh voters are going to get a chance to see two running mates who are advocating for two very different visions for the country just today for mm -hmm. example we have a new report out from the campaign on famously Donald Trump in the first debate saying he has a concept of a plan on health care. Well, right after that, J.D. Vance, his running mate, came out and explained what that plan meant by pushing that we're going to reopen what are called high risk pools. That's for people with pre-existing conditions. Okay, I was just asking you a question a about how he's feeling going pool. into the campaign, though. Can you answer that? My question, how Waltz is feeling, because the reports are that he's nervous. So that was my question. And bro, and already, already debate tomorrow night, I think. Uh, voters are going to get a chance to see two running mates who are advocating for two very different visions for the country. Just today, for mm -hmm. example, we have a new report out from the campaign on famously Donald Trump in the first debate saying he has a concept of a plan on health care. Well, right after that, J.D. Vance, his running mate, came out and explained what that plan meant by pushing. He can't even answer the question without bashing J.D. Vance and Trump. That's how you know you got a dub, bro. I don't care what nobody talking about. That's how you know. Come up, no man. Listen, come November. That's is dub time. Y'all know what dub is. Just that's the W. That's the win. That's the winning time. That's how you know every time. You ask him a question about you know, and it it wasn't even no crazy question. How you think Tim Wall's gonna do? You automatic. You automatically go and you go in on JD Vance and Trump. That is insane that we're going to reopen what are called high risk pools. That's for people with pre-existing conditions. Okay, I was just asking you a question about a how he's feeling going pool. into the campaign, though. Can you answer that? my question? How Waltz is feeling? Because the reports are that he's nervous. So that was my question. Yeah, he's looking forward to the debate. I think he's looking forward to debating J.D. Vance, who, again, is continuing to advocate for returning to high risk pools. That'll put people with pre-existing conditions uh, back into these high risk pools that cost them more money and could kick them off of their okay, insurance. Well, and so when I bring he, that up, you know, he doesn't, the kind he doesn't of really agree that that's what he's trying to do. So that's why we're going to hear that tomorrow night. Debate. Yeah, we look, we look forward to, you know, hearing them go back and forth on these things, because you're right. Um, all of these issues are very important for us to hear the candidates talk about. I, I want to ask you about this from um, <laughs> Alyssa Slotkin in Michigan. Uh, she was speaking to donors, and this, according to Axios, said that she was concerned that Harris is underwater in Michigan. She said, I'm not feeling my best right now about where we are on Kamala Harris in a place like Michigan. We have her underwater in our polling. Um, what is your thought on that and is it is that the case well i think it's a it's a good reminder that this is going to be a really close race i think when when mm -hmm. we look to we, the fact that we have only 36 or so days left until the election you know the candidates are going to be have to be out there earning people's support and this is a 50 50 race and so when you think about a state like michigan or you think about wisconsin or pennsylvania where president trump was this weekend for his rally in erie you know the vote why is president trump always in his man mouth 
I'm just saying, like, why? Like, I'm confused. That is insane. Can't even answer no questions about, like, nothing. It's always Trump. Trump did this. Trump did that. Trump has this going on. Trump, he might as well work for the Trump administration. As much as he talk about him. Pennsylvania, where President Trump was this weekend for his rally in Erie, you know, the voters want to hear, what are you going to do for me? And I, we were talking about this a second ago about the debate tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Again, when it comes to these real issues like health care, J.D. Vance is proposing taking pre-existing conditions. With people with pre -existing, a lot of Fox News viewers out there. There's a lot of Fox News viewers out there who know what it's like to have a pre-existing condition and have a very hard time getting insurance and having to fight for claims to cover essential benefits, things like that. These are the kind of things that your viewers actually care a lot about. And what we hope happens tomorrow night in the debate is that J.D. Vance explains why his agenda would put those people and their insurance on the chopping block. You know, five million people in Pennsylvania well, let, you know who what, have pre-existing yeah, They literally just said that this man, Tim Walls, is nervous and he warned Kamala, bro. This is a report that did, it literally started, you two, so I can't, I'm, this is something that it, it said. Warn Harris. That he isn't, I, I'm basically saying I'm not a great debater, Harris, I'm not. And this man is going in talking about what J.D. Vance did and Trump and this, that, and the other. Y'all need to be focused on what y'all got going on because evidently that man's nervous. He's scared, traumatized. What I'm not, I'm, I'm just not, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not getting it. And you got to slow down, buddy. Telling you a chance to talk about it because I, I know from the Vance team they say that that is not what they have in mind. So you and I don't need to debate. We're going to watch them debate this tomorrow night right. um, because they know a whole lot more about exactly what their own policies are. I, I want to ask you this quickly. Th this is Harry Enton because we're, we're covering this huge story about the ports potentially shutting down tomorrow here in one of the busiest port areas on the Atlantic coast. This is Harry Enton talking about union voters. Watch. Sometimes there are data points that just jump off off the screen, should set off sirens. All right, this is union households, this is Democratic margin in presidential election. It ain't what it used to be. Look at where Kamala Harris is today. She's only leading by nine points. That would be the worst Democratic performance in a generation. Watch him blame it on Trump. Watch him blame it on Trump. He gonna blame it on J.D. Vance. He gonna blame it on everybody else but her. Watch. I already know. I already know he is. I, and I promise, I have not seen his video. I had. That's why I'm sorry for. I'm sorry for uh, the making the noise in the mic. I ain't gonna lie. Pause. But I'm sorry for doing that. You know what I mean. But at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, and I wouldn't. I'm telling you, I did not see this video. I wouldn't even did that because I got a pinch of nerve in my back. But my reaction to that is sad. That is sickening, bro. That right there is sickening. You have from Clinton thirty points. Uh, Hillary Clinton plus twelve points. Biden nineteen nine, bro. The word this this would be a worst performance since nineteen eighty four, bro. I'm waiting on what he gonna say this time. Vice President Harris support this strike, which could begin as soon as tomorrow. Well, I think you've heard from the administration today about the fact that they're working to uh, bring people together to come to the bargaining table. Of course, the vice president believes in the importance of collective bargaining. And, you know, we've seen this just in the last few weeks. We've had the Teamsters in places like Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Nevada and Georgia all come out and endorse her candidacy because I think a lot of rank and file labor out there understand that she's actually fighting for their values while Donald Trump mm. is trying to give more tax cuts to those at the very top and billionaires. And that's a real fundamental difference in this race. And I think a lot of your viewers are interested in who's looking out for who and they want to know which candidate's actually looking out for their economic interests. And so when it comes to working people across this country, you know, I think right. Vice President Harris so has a real plan to bring down strike? costs for it, them. It, you know, she's going to be asked this tomorrow night, I would imagine. Do you support the strike at the ports? So can I just ask you to give me an answer on that? Does she support it? Yes or no? Well, I think I just answered this question. The administration is trying very hard to bring people to the table, encouraging people to come to the table in good faith when it comes to this collective bargaining dispute. Obviously, uh, you know, no one wants to see, uh, you know, bad things happen to the economy or bad things happen to supply chains. The administration's mm -hmm. obviously worked for four years now to shore up our supply chains after what happened during COVID and made great progress and are monitoring the supply chain ramifications of this conversation. But she would encourage that folks come to the bargaining table and have the discussion to try to resolve this in, in a way that supports workers' rights to 
collectively bargain right. and, and push well, for their own benefits. Be and I think that that's a very big difference yeah. in this race between President Trump, who isn't always on the side of working people, uh, and Vice President. She didn't even mention Donald Trump at all, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, what is going on? Oh, they had the uh, the little Red Cross thing pop in, y'all. My apologize. I apologize for that. I don't know what happened. But yeah, they got the little red cross thing right here. Y'all can click on. I tried to go back. She didn't she didn't mention Donald. She didn't say nothing. She's talking about what they got going on. He ready to bash Donald Trump every single time. In every interview, everything that we didn't saw from Ian Sims. This is all he does. That is insane. President Harris, who is? Okay, well, that, that's what their battle is all about. Um, it's a very, very tight race. So you've got a lot of people who, um, who you know, are, are on each side of the fence. And I think tomorrow night you're going to hear a lot about this strike. Um, and we look forward to hearing her answers about whether or not she supports it. Ian Sams, thank you very much. Tight, tight race. Five weeks to go. We hope to talk to you more as uh, this whole thing moves forward. Really a whole, and a whole, I'm telling you, <clears throat> the whole administration has a hard time with answering questions without putting Trump in it, without putting J.D. Vance, it's literally, or answering questions at, at all. It's always beat around the bush. That's the go-to. So we either going to beat around the bush or we going to blame it on Trump. Matter of fact, blame it on J.D. Vance too. Like, bro, dude, like, answer the question. We still don't even know if, if he, you know what I'm saying? We, from what we understand, the reports, is saying that he's nervous. He warned Kamala that I'm not a great debater. And he's obviously not denying it. He didn't say nothing about it. He too focused on what J.D. Vance and, and, and Trump got going on. That's why I said he ought to work for. But then again, we don't need Mr. Pinocchio with us. I'm not talking about nobody, YouTube. I'm talking about Pinocchio. You know what I mean? Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button. Definitely appreciate y'all. Much love, everybody. Catch y'all next one.